My name is Dr. Anton Fukori from Mid-America Hand to Shoulder Clinic. I would like to speak to you about cubital tunnel syndrome. This is a common condition that we see in our practice. Uh, you may have heard of carpal tunnel syndrome, which is a compression of the uh, median nerve at the level of the wrist. Well, this is similar, but involves a different nerve at the level of the elbow called ulnar nerve. The nerve is, if you can think of it as electrical wire, but it's soft and delicate. It looks like a, a long strand of spaghetti. So when you think about it, this particular electrical wire, this nerve goes through a very tortuous path. And when it gets compressed or irritated at the level of the elbow, which is the inside of the elbow called cubital tunnel, then we call this condition cubital tunnel syndrome. The causes can be from prolonged elbow flexion, such as uh, those who perhaps are on the phone for a prolonged period of time, or for example, those who drive with their elbow flex for a prolonged period of time, those who do repetitive activities, perhaps a uh, healed fracture in an abnormal position, spurs from arthritis, swelling, other conditions such as a cyst or lesions involving the inside of the elbow where it can compress the nerve. Uh, any of these conditions can cause the, uh, the nerve to become uh, irritated and can be compressed, causing uh, various symptoms. Well, what are the symptoms? Uh, the symptoms are very similar to carpal tunnel syndrome, but it involves different digits. The carpal tunnel syndrome specifically affects the thumb, index, and middle finger. Cubital tunnel syndrome affects the ring and small finger, although patients may uh, complain of other digits involved. It also can cause numbness in the top of the hand. It can also cause weakness, specifically weakness of uh, finger abduction as well as adduction of the thumb. This is the maneuver that it takes to grasp uh, the key, if you will. With time, uh, the muscle, which needs, if you will, electricity from that nerve, can undergo what's called muscle wasting and muscle atrophy. The symptoms include tingling, numbness, pain, and with time, they may actually complain of weakness. So how do we diagnose uh, cubital tunnel syndrome? Well, we talk to patients, we find out what their symptomology uh, is it tingling, numbness, what area is involved, do they have weakness, uh, do, do they wake up in the middle of the night with tingling and numbness, uh, which is not uncommon as people sleep with the elbows in flex position. We test them. Uh, we, for example, one of the uh, common tests we use is what's called elbow flexion test, where we ask the patient to flex their elbow and see if that provokes tingling and numbness in all the digits. Uh, we also test their strength. We may also get an extra of the elbow, see if there's spurs or other bony abnormalities that may be pinching the nerve. And some doctors will also order an electrical test called EMG to see if that uh, other nerve is in fact sick and to also uh, test uh, other adjacent nerves such as median nerve for the carpal tunnel syndrome. It's not unusual for patients to have both cubital tunnel syndrome and carpal tunnel syndrome. Once a diagnosis is made, then uh, the doc doctor will uh, implement uh, various treatment modalities. One of the things that can irritate the nerve is for the patient to keep their elbow in a flex position. So what we do is we order a splint to keep the elbow in extension and patients can wear that at night so that it prevents the elbow from, uh, from flexing. We can also order a pad to prevent any uh, irritation or compression of the nerve. Medications such as uh, ibuprofen and naproxen can also be uh, helpful. Therapy can also be helpful. After a course of treatment, uh, including splints and medication and therapy and rest and time, as well as educating the patient in terms of avoiding provocative activities, then surgical intervention may be considered. That would be the last resort. The purpose of the surgery is to relieve the pressure off the nerve. Uh, some surgeons will uh, identify the nerve, uh, remove it from its tunnel, the cubital tunnel, and uh, move it uh, anteriorly or forward in what's called transposition. Other uh, surgeons, uh, as myself, will do what's called medial condylectomy, where they identify the nerve, release the pressure off the nerve, keep it in the same site, but shave a portion of the bone. And in this uh, uh, particular scenario, I uh, allow patients to use their arm for light activity the same day. Uh, they may type and write and pick up light objects. And uh, normally we start therapy uh, approximately uh, a week after surgery and uh, there's no splints or cast uh, afterwards. Gradually, we can get patients back to their activities. If patients work in uh, light activities, such as uh, secretarial work or uh, non-laborous type of jobs, uh, they may go back to work uh, within a few days or a week or two. But if they have laborious jobs, such as 
plumbers or, or let's say carpenters, they may, it may take two to three months before we can get them back to uh, full duty work. The results are good and uh, patients uh, are generally quite uh, happy with the outcome. For more information and to see more educational videos, please visit our website at handtoshoulderclinic.com.